Okay, today we're doing Red Danes uh, part three on our series on how to build a freestyle barn. And we're looking at floors and how we do them. Um, the way we do them, it's all on farm with, with uh, just by hand basically with the materials we have on hand. We cast the one half first and this allows us to make the groove that we need to put in the middle for our automatic scraping system with the cable. Um, so here you can see a completed section with the, um, the pattern that we've put in with 10 mil grooves, 10 mil deep, 10 mil wide in this diamond shape which should give the cows really good traction. We've got the floor sloping slightly to the middle from both sides so that the so it will always be dry with the water draining into the groove. So what we want to show you today is this section of about 20 meters. We've passed in, in four hours starting in the morning and we've now we've just got to this point here which you can see is still wet. We've leveled it up and now we're going to go to the beginning. So that's about four hours since it was cast. It should be ready for us to do our imprint. Here you can see the stencil that we've made. Um, it's, uh, they are applying rhino cast to it, which uh, prevents it sticking, the cement sticking to it when we are imprinting it into the wet cement. So the guys apply that liberally with a brush and then we imprint it into the already cast concrete. So we are now getting the stencil or the, uh, ready and we've put these pipes in which we can adjust to allow us to reach the right position where we need to, um, we need to stamp. So we, ha we have a straight edge there so that we can see that we get the, the pattern new, uh, relatively uniform. We can place it on the cement, we have a string in place here helps us, guides us to the right position. So once we have it in place, we then bang it into the concrete using this piece of railway sleeper, or railway track rather, um, until we get it down to the exact depth that we need. Once we've stamped the prints in, into the cement, we then improve the grooves using this little hand machine we've made. Um, the truth is this has got a little bit dry. This should have been done maybe half an hour ago, but you'll learn as you go um, what timing you need. It depends a bit on the weather, the cement, and your mixture and so on. One thing that we found uh, with practice is that we, we, we want to use 19 millimeter stone and a fine river sand. If you use a very coarse river sand, you don't get the nice straight edges and the nice grooves that we require. There you can see where we've made the groove. We, we needed to do a 20 by 20 groove for our cable. So we, we put in the, this, this metal bar to in place. So when we cast, we cast against that. We'll then pull that out once the cement is dry. Another thing that's very important is the feed trough. Most freestyle barns simply have a, a wall there and then open for the food to be to go on the floor where the mixer drives. I find in hot environments it's nice to have a feed trough that uh, the food doesn't dry out so much. Uh, we also tile ours and uh, because we find we never have to clean them then. The cows lick them clean and you don't get a build up of bacteria and rotten food and, and especially when you're feeding things like molasses and silage. What, what is important is that you make the trough at least a meter wide uh, and, the, and the bottom at, at cow level. We then put slopes like this so when the cows try and sift or sort the food, it falls back down into where they're eating and immensely they just give up and eat everything. 